All right, welcome back. This is Kevin McCain with Idaho Horror Classes and Kevin McCain Studios. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the, the color wheel. Uh, we've got a color wheel here in, in, done in oil paint. We've got a color wheel done here in watercolor. Uh, this is a 12 color uh, color wheel. Uh, and this is the color wheel uh, that was developed by Guthard back in the mid-1800s, 1860s in there. <clears throat> And it's the color wheel that was used by the post impressionists and impressionists. Most artists through the 20th century and most artists still today use this particular color wheel. It, it's, it's very common and the one most commonly taught. Now there's some people coming up today talking a lot about the new color wheel, the one you've never heard of and all this sort of stuff. And they're really talking about the Munsell uh, color system and Munsell's color wheel and basically uh, Munsell took this color wheel, which is based on 12 colors, and then he took in basically some people call like the metric system uh, for the color wheel, and so every every color has 10 steps of value and all these different things, and uh, most artists today use a, use a a portion of Munsell and they combine it with the Guter color wheel, and that they find that's the most powerful. Uh, Munsell's color wheel just by itself does not work all that effectively when we're talking about real world paint. Uh, some people use it because it's the basis for Pantones. It was originally developed for the printmaking industry. And so some people are using it to, because it dovetails uh, into digital painting uh, in, in certain ways. But <clears throat> we're actually dealing with mixing of paint and putting paint together. And so for us, we'll actually usually we'll borrow some concepts from Munsell then we incorporate into this. But the color wheel has been used like that for ages. I mean, Munsell is not a new color wheel. It was developed in the early, early part of the 20th century. It's, it's a fairly old color wheel by itself. Um, but again, we use the one that's going to be most effective for us. So this is the Guter uh, color wheel. Guter is, some, is, is spelled a little bit like, it's almost like Van Gogh, except it's got an, an E at the end. And as I understand from those who speak German, it's, it's pronounced Guter. Um, who was a who was a you know just a, an amazing individual who did dealt in science and arts and 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 all kinds of different things literature and and uh, a real Renaissance man of course he wasn't in the Renaissance but you know he he just did a whole lot of different things and did them really really well um, so anyways we've got our our twelve color systems I want to talk about this because I teach both watercolor and oil uh, the way that we deal with with uh, with paint in either medium is the same in most ways. There's a couple of nuances that make it slightly different, but for the most part, they're the same thing. So we're gonna talk about some of the different properties of the color wheel. Um, for these two, I think we'll go ahead, well, I'll use both of them for right now. But we have our primary colors. Now our primary colors are equally spaced apart. They may, should make an equilateral triangle. And the primary colors are yellow, red and blue. Now when we talk about these colors, we're talking about true, because there's all kinds of yellows, all kinds of reds, all kinds of blues. We're talking about yellow at its most intense point, and we're talking about a yellow that is neither too warm, nor no, neither too orange, nor too green. And the true yellow is supposed to be like um, the sun at noon in July. Uh, you know, that it's not the morning sun, it's not the evening sun, it's again, it's the sun at and it's in summer because the, the, the sun is a little cooler at different times of the year. So we have the true yellow, and it's supposed to be yellow at its most intense point, uh, and its brightest, highest intensity, highest chroma, same thing. Uh, the, the red is supposed to be true red. It's not blood red. It's not orange red. It's not red violet. It's sort of a Christmas bow red, that true red, and again, it's at its brightest point. So it's neither too purple nor neither too orange. And then we have true blue, and true blue is neither too green nor too violet at its most intense. Okay, so this is supposed to be a true blue. Um, and we want to start to look for the true blue. Uh, now, obviously, there's, you know, there's a slight variation between these two. Uh, they're both close enough. You can say, yeah, that's true blue um, to me. This one actually has a little less violet than this one, but still uh, very, very, very close to true blue. Uh, and on this on this uh, camera, I don't know if we'll be able to distinguish the difference. It's, it's pretty subtle. Um, but we have our so we have our yet our red. Pardon me. We have our yellow, our red, and our blue. Now, interestingly enough, yellow is you know the yellow should always be at the top. That's how we know whether the the color wheel is pointing up is that the yellow is always at the top. And that means purple will be at the bottom. In Guter's system, 
Again, we're not dealing with, this is still, again, the most common color wheel. Um, so again, we have yellow, red, and blue for our primaries. Then we have our secondary colors. And our secondary colors should be equally spaced between the primaries. So between yellow and red is orange because orange is a mixture of yellow and red. Between red and blue, we have purple. And between, you know, equally distant between blue and yellow is green. And again, we have true, we want true, uh, true green. Um, not too light, not too dark. Uh, this is actually a bit dark for green. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, for true green, it's just a little duller. We need it at its brightest point. This is much, we can see between the two, this is a brighter green. And so that means this got a little dark. Um, I used to have all the students create their own color wheels from, from mixtures. Uh, and so this was when we did that. And we could have, you know, changed this green a little bit to make it more sort of a true green. Um, because again, when you go darker, you lose some intensity. So this is just too dark because it's a little duller, this is a little brighter. Um, so we have our, our secondary colors, orange, green, and purple. And they're also supposed to be equally spaced, or what's called a triad. And so we have two, in, we have, you know, this triangle and this triangle, we have a star, right? Okay, which was considered a very, very powerful uh, symbol in, in the sacred geometry and other things. Um, and so it's no, no wonder that we have, that it was set up this way. Uh, it's how you can also create a hexagon, you know, again, it has geometric roots and geometry is, is part of the golden section and part of the sacred geometry and all the good stuff. But we have, again, two triads, our secondary colors and our primary colors in our color wheel. Okay, so primary colors are red, yellow, blue, and our secondary colors are orange, green, and purple. There's six of them. And then we have six other colors. So we have primaries, we have secondaries, and then we have tertiary colors. Now, I should probably say that most people will say, well, why do we call red, yellow, and blue primary? And it's because some people will say, well, because you mix all colors from red, yellow, and blue, uh, which is a bit of a lie uh, at, uh, or an exaggeration. Um, if we've got only one yellow, one red, and one blue, pardon me, one, one yellow, one red, and one blue, we can't mix every color. We can mix a lot of colors, but you cannot mix every color with one yellow, one red, one blue. You might be able to mix a couple of thousand of colors at, you know, at the most. With those, you might be able to get a couple thousand. Uh, and that's if you have white and black and brown. If I went ahead and added two different types of yellows, two different types of reds, two different types of blues, depending on which blues, which reds, and which yellows, all of a sudden you might be able to mix 10,000 colors. If I went ahead and added the right three yellows, the right three blues, and the right three reds, now you may be able to mix a million colors. So I want you to understand there's a theory and then there's the practicality. We're talking about the practical mixing applications of the color wheel and how to use it when, when we paint. Um, so that's why you'll see artists with all different kinds of types of colors on their palette because they're trying to have expand the amount of colors that they can mix, okay? Um, so again, from the red, yellow, blue, we, we mix the orange, green, and purple, and we can also uh, mix the colors in between because this is supposed to be true orange, uh, and most oranges are not true orange. Actually, true oranges, kind of like tangerines, are closer to true orange, so it's neither too yellow nor too red. Purple should be neither too red nor too blue. Uh, Concord grape juice, or grape soda or something like that. Again, that's pretty close to true, true purple. Again, true blue, we're not talking about Bermuda grass. Uh, we're not talking about Kentucky blue grass. We're talking about sort of that plain Jane green grass color. This is a better example of it, but uh, you get the idea that this, again, we have those, those uh, uh, we have the primary colors, we have the secondary colors, and then we have the six what are called tertiary colors. So we have the third level. The primary colors are the first level, secondary colors are the second level, and then those six tertiaries are the third level. And the tertiary colors are supposed to be equally distant between these colors. We can put like 10 steps between here and turn this thing into a rainbow, but that's not gonna help us. If we got too much information, it's not gonna help us as much. So what this color wheel is, is it's a simplification of all the colors out there. And so it's a simplified idea that we can measure color with. These tertiary colors are, spoke, are supposed to be equally distant from the primary color and the, 
pardon me, the primary color and the secondary color. It's supposed to be right in the middle. Um, so we have a blue that's either, too, you know, it's supposed to be equally distant from true blue and true purple is supposed to be our blue violet. Uh, equally distant from our red and our violet is our red violet. Again, this might be a little bit easier to see because these are a little bit on the dark side. Um, these are actually closer to what you'd have sort of your true color wheel. This is a little better color wheel than this, but still, this is the, still the idea. Um, and if you could, if you were looking at this, you could see that for the most part, this, this hue uh, is equally distant between red and purple. But these are a little bit easier to see on this camera. So um, again, we have that this is equally distant between the purple and the red. The red orange should be equally distant between the red and the orange. Yellow orange should be equally distant between yellow and orange. And it's also supposed to be its brightest point. So in terms of the tertiary colors, they are as follows. Yellow green, we'll start with the yellows first. It's yellow green, yellow orange, red orange, red violet, blue violet, and blue green. So you've got six tertiary colors, okay? Um, and again, that's yellow green, yellow orange, red orange, red purple, blue purple, blue green. Those are our six. Um, in terms of some other color relationships we want, we want to know about, complementary color. We want to talk about complementary color and we want to talk about um, analogous colors. We also will talk a little bit about neutrals, but we'll get to that in a moment. So complementary colors are opposite the color wheel. So yellow and purple are complements, blue and orange are complements. Here's something to help you understand your complements because we use complementary color in color mixing. We use it in color structure. We use it for creating color schemes. We, create it for, we use it for creating color harmonies. So you need to know about your different relationships with your colors. Complementary color is very, very important. If I have a primary color, let's say I picked red, and I said, what's the complement of red? Well, the complement of a primary color is always a secondary color. So that means it can't be yellow or blue. It's always gonna be a secondary. It's either orange, purple, or green. But not only that, but the secondary color that we're looking for does not have red in it. So that means purple's out of the running and orange is out of the running, and the only thing left is green and green and red are complementary colors. Complementary colors means different than, and there's nothing more different than red than green. Okay, if I ask, hey, what's blue? What's its complementary color? We're looking for a secondary color that doesn't contain blue. Well, purple contains blue, that's out of the running. Green has blue, that's out of the running. So that means orange and blue are complementary colors. Now, if I have a secondary color, like let's say we said, all right, well, what about purple? Well, if we have a secondary color, the complement of a secondary is always a primary color. And not only that, but it's the primary color that doesn't make purple. So we've got the primary color red is out of the running, the primary color blue is out of the running, and so the complement of purple is yellow. Yellow and purple are complementary colors. All right, now the reason it's important for us to know that is that we want to be able to be able to rattle that off. Like if I woke you out of a dead sleep and asked you, what's the complement of orange? You could say, blue, now get out of my room. You know, you want to be able to know it backwards and forwards. And especially for these tertiary colors because the, the complement of a tertiary color is another tertiary color. So if I said, hey, if I've got red orange, what's its complement? Well, what you'll do is you'll say, well, what's the complement of red? Well, the complement of red is green. What's the complement of orange? Well, the complement of orange is blue. Therefore, the complement of red orange is blue green. And if we come over here, lo and behold, blue green is the complement of red orange. Again, you might say, why do I want to know this? Again, because we use it in so many different ways in composition, in color structure, in color schemes, um, the way colors react one to another. We use it for mixing, we use it for all kinds of things. So that's why we want to know that. Um, so we'll talk about what's complementary mixing. We'll talk down the road about complementary mixing of color versus analogous mixing of color and all kinds of things. Um, so yeah, if we took like yellow green, what's the complement of yellow green? Complement of yellow is purple. Complement of green is red. Therefore, the complement of yellow green is a red violet, right? So again, you're going to want to know your complementary colors, um, so that again, so you can just rattle them off. Boom, 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 boom. You'll become a better painter by knowing your color wheel. So the other thing we want to understand with the color wheel is 
analogous color. So analogous means similar to. So if I have red and purple, they're similar because they share, red is in purple, right? And so they share something in common, so this is similar. So red is analogous to purple. Now we could also say, well, pur red purple though is closer to red. So red purple is more analogous to red than purple is. So when we're talking about analogous colors, it's similar to, but of these two colors, this one's the most similar because it's the closest to red. So we're going to use this in dealing with mixing of colors and by understanding the characteristics of color, uh, we're going to be able to do more with, with being able to match colors that we want to, to mix. Um, and so because we have color that moves all over the place. If we have a red apple, there's going to be reds that are oranges, there are going to be reds that are true reds, there are going to be reds that are red violets, there might even be reds that are purples, red purples, you know, where they're really getting close to purple. There are also going to be different values, it's lighter in the light, it's darker in the dark, so color moves all over the place, and it helps by knowing the color wheel. So, and we're going to be using this as we, as, as we start dealing with color. Now, I have a, another video that talks about the hues, and we talks about the what a hue is, it talks about chroma and intensity, and it also talks about value. And that's three properties of color that we need to be able to, to identify so then we can know what we're going to mix. And then we have to know the hues, which these are all the hues, right? So they're supposed to be the hues at their brightest, most saturated, I should say at their most intense. Saturated isn't quite correct, but we're not going to get into why. Um, it's a synonym, but it's not, it's more proper to say intense or, or higher chroma, but these are the, the hues. So you have red, yellow, blue, orange, green, and purple. Now you could say, well, if that's a purple and its hue is purple, but is it more of a blue purple or is it more of a red purple? Absolutely. Um, there's two types of color wheels. Again, we're not going to get a ton into this right now because color, color space, in other words, the amount of colors there are is a three dimensional system. It has height, it has volume. Uh, and it goes from light to dark and from brighter to duller to um, darker to lighter. And so it has, it, it's three dimensional. And you can't th show a three dimensional object with just one color wheel. So you used to see two different color wheels. You had one color wheel where the, the colors would be getting grayer or duller and duller and duller and duller until they all met a neutral gray right in the middle, which is what this is kind of a nod to. And then you had other color wheels that showed the colors getting darker until they got to black. So you had one color wheel that was showing the value steps and you had another that was showing the chroma or the intensity steps. And then you had the hues that was, that's all three properties. And so you used to see those really commonly. You don't see them as much anymore. Usually you'll see the one where it goes to gray and not so much the ones where it goes darker in value. But by understanding our color, you will do much better with your color mixing, with, with doing your little paintings and all getting all that done. So I want you to look at the color wheel, uh, buy yourself a color wheel. I, I recommend people that are painting, have a color wheel around for the first, you know, six months while you're painting, always have a color wheel so you can, you know, judge the colors, be thinking about color. The more you think about color and color relationships, the better your painting will be. This has been Kevin McCain with Idaho Art Classes. You guys have a great day and bye-bye now.